Hi, I'm Kevin and welcome to Project Overlay in the USA. Today we're going to talk about a big step for me. That's right, I think I've decided on my first big purchase for overlanding and the truck modification. Today I'm going to talk about getting a truck cap for the truck. That's right, if you go back and watch that video somewhere up here, uh, I talked about what's the first thing I want to do with my Chevy Colorado. Well, guess what? I didn't even talk about a truck cap, but I've decided through investigation and uh, looking at other people's Chevy Colorados, looking at other overlanding trucks, I've decided to go with a truck cap first. So we're going to talk about that today on Project Overland USA. Now I've got to be honest, I've looked at a lot of things. In fact, I've got a paperwork of researching and quotes and dealership stuff and uh, modifications and everything else. I mean, I've got a stack of papers here. Not only that, I've spent so much time on the computer that I don't even have time to actually go overlanding. I mean, has that ever happened to you guys where you do so much research and you look at so many different options that actually the time to go overlanding has actually been taken away? But here I am, I'm looking at getting a truck cap first. It was a very tough decision uh, because I was really debating between getting uh, a four inch lift a six inch lift or a truck cap and it, it's really hard to decide but I figured you know what what's the most important thing I want to do I want to have a safe and secure place to not only go sleeping in but also to carry my gear so I had to choose between do I want to really go rock crawling first or do I want to have a safe and secure sleeping area and I know that, sure, I can get a tent for a hundred bucks and throw that on the ground, but I really wanted something that was going to be safe and secure from the weather elements, such as rain, uh, heavy storms, wind. And I've just seen time and time again where people have a tent and it just turns out really bad for them if there's a bad storm or bad weather conditions. So. This wasn't a tough decision for me to make. I know the value in a truck cap. And as much as I wanna have a lift and look cool, unfortunately, I'm gonna get a truck cap and it'll make me look more like a contractor rather than an overlander. But what can you do? Uh, priorities first, right? So uh, I've done quite a bit of overlanding already that does not require a four or six inch lift. So I can live without the lift not only uh, do I need a truck cap for overlanding, but it's nice to have a truck cap, especially up here in the Midwest. It rains a lot. And having a truck cap and some way to carry stuff such as furniture, groceries, uh, Home Depot supplies, uh, whatever you can fit in that back of the truck, um, it's good to have a truck cap. It really is. With the snow and the rain. Now, if I lived in Texas like I used to, a truck cap probably wouldn't be on the top of my list, but since I live in the Midwest right now, you need something to cover your truck bed, or if you want shelter from bad and clement weather. So that's why I decided to go with the truck cap first instead of a lift. And here's the other big thing about a truck cap uh, that kind of cinched the deal for me. Like I want like a five second setup. When I get to camp, like. I don't want to flip something open. I don't want to unlatch anything. I don't want to have to pull a ladder down. I don't want to do anything. I want to turn the truck off, open my door, walk around and open the tailgate and jump in and go to sleep. Now, obviously there's a lot more involved with it, but honestly, if that's all you wanted to do, if it was a late night, all you got to do is jump in the back, roll out your sleeping bag, and you're good to go. Like there's no setup time. It's like a five second setup time, which is the amount of time it takes from, for you to walk from the front door to the tailgate. So um, that was another huge bonus for me as far as looking at setup times 
for a truck cap. So those items there were kind of the big checkoff marks for me as far as why did I want to get a truck cap and why did I want to get it first. So now that I've decided on a truck cap, here comes the hard part, deciding which truck cap to get. You got fiberglass, you got aluminum, you got low profile, you got uh, extended height, you got a very extended height. So now the hard part is, what do I want to do? You got ARE, you got Lear, you got Swiss, you got all these manufacturers of truck caps. So in the past with one of my trucks, I've had a fiberglass truck cap and it held up pretty well. I mean, it was, uh, man, I want to say it was almost a 20 year old truck cap, no leaks, no problems. Uh, the sliding screen doors were a little, a little kind of bowed in a little bit from use, but other than that, that truck cap was like super reliable, super good. I uh, didn't experience any leaks with it. So that I knew fiberglass truck caps are good, but I also wanted to investigate aluminum truck caps as well, such as the contractor type truck caps, because they can carry a lot of weight from what I've seen. So. I've been looking at the Overland series truck caps. I've been looking at the ARE contractors series of truck caps. Um, there's a lot of options. I've been looking for weeks and months now uh, to decide on what type of truck cap that I want to get. Now the benefits of a fiberglass truck cap come down to weight and style. Uh, I cannot argue that a fiberglass truck cap looks very stylish. They they mold most of them to fit the specific truck that you have. So fiberglass looks good. Uh, I gotta say, especially the, uh, especially the roof line tr uh, fiberglass truck caps, those look slick. Uh, you can get the extended height ones. Those still look pretty good. Uh, with the aluminum, I mean, you gotta face it. They look, if you go with aluminum, it's gonna look like you got an old beater truck or some contractor's truck or some skilled trade truck. Uh, so that's kind of the downfall of aluminum. The reason I'm looking at aluminum as far as like the ARE contractor's caps is I want to be able to drill into it and I want it to be able to carry a lot of weight. Now those contractor caps have an internal skeleton of aluminum load bearing bars. So they can take a lot of weight on the roof and you can also hang stuff from those, that skeleton system. I'm a little concerned with the fiberglass. I know you can drill into it, uh, but I'm really concerned with the fiberglass as far as drilling into it. And then maybe not right away, but maybe years down the road, it cracking. I've seen fiberglass shells crack just from age. So what I want to do, just to clarify what I want to do, I want to put a roof rack on these camper shells. So me putting a roof rack on a fiberglass versus an aluminum, definitely aluminum's the way to go as far as strength and durability. Uh, I know some of the ads for Fiberglass shells say that they're able to hold 300 pounds in a roof rack. I totally get that. And if you got one, that's awesome. I'm just really concerned about them cracking. Um, obviously they probably will not crack in five years, but if you have it for five to 10 years, there's a possibility with all the vibration, all the weight, you know, I'm thinking of, I'm probably going to be putting close to 150 pounds, if not more, 150 to 200 pounds. That's a lot of weight vibrating and bouncing up and down. And uh, I'm just really concerned having fiberglass that that's gonna cause it to crack. So I'm leaning more towards the aluminum shell. Uh, number one, I know I can drill into it. And if I make a mistake, I can seal it. No big deal, it's not going to crack. It can hold the weight, but you know, I'm a little undecided right now because you got looks and maybe my comparison about strength and durability is not fair. 
So in the comments below, let me know what you think I should go with. Should I go with, should I go with a fiberglass shell or should I go with an aluminum shell? Uh, there is pluses and minuses to both. And at this point, I really don't know what to do. I, I'm leaning towards aluminum, um, but I can go either way at this point. So let me know what I should do. And if you have examples of your own truck, uh, post links to those down below so I can click on them and go see what you have on your truck because I think it'd be really fun and really informative. So I've got a mountain of paperwork here to go through and to decide what I want to do. You know, the other thing is too, this is not an easy decision because of price. Uh, I was a little shocked when I found out that uh, camper shells are no longer about $2,000. For all the things that I'm looking at in a camper shell, whether it be fiberglass or aluminum, uh, we're looking at over $4,000. And I was a little, I had a little sticker shock uh, when I saw that because uh, I was not expecting to spend $4,000 on a camper shell, or I shouldn't say camper shell, just aluminum cap shell, whatever. There's no camping part in it. Uh, I got to do all that myself. I got to like put all the camping stuff in it. Um, so yeah, sticker shock for sure. And uh, this definitely uh, is about the same cost as a lift kit. I'm looking at about over $4,000 for a lift kit with installation, a BDS lift kit. And I'm looking at about the same amount for the camper shell. So uh, a lot of cost involved here. So again, I have sticker shock based on that. So um, anyways, uh, everything costs more these days. Doesn't it? Anyways, if you have any ideas on how I can save money on a shell, a camper shell or a truck cap, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear that. So at any rate, thanks so much for listening. Be sure and hit the subscribe button so you'll keep up to date on this build as well as our build on the Jeep Cherokee as well as our adventures in the overlanding community. So we'll see you at the next episode.